Maybe you have heard it that the next big programming language and skill is gonna be the English language. So why is this? I think it's gonna be a big search of new jobs that will require people to interact with AI models say like ChatGPT and to write good prompts. So today I will look at what some smart people say about this, some prompt engineering job postings and what kind of skills I think you will need going forward and finally some examples of work I have done for some clients. So let's just dive in. Let's just hear what David Sachs, the Silicon Valley legend, the former COO of PayPal and a member of the All In podcast is saying about a basic prompt engineering example and how this can improve productivity going forward. So I, I had an interesting you know, AI experience this week, and I, I think we're all going to start having these stories. Oh, you use like the AI to make we, a script of how to talk to your no, kids? No, every week there'll be some new like use case that you see that you're kind of blown away by. The, the use case I saw this past week in a, in a product demo was they were showing me like an Excel spreadsheet, like a very complicated Excel spreadsheet modeling a financial asset. And they had a plug-in to a chat GPT type AI. And so they just asked it, they typed in, what does this spreadsheet do? And it spit out like a one paragraph explanation of what the spreadsheet did. And it was really good. I mean, because me just eyeballing the spreadsheet, I could not have figured out like instantly what that thing did. It would have taken me like a while to figure it out. It told me, here are the key inputs, here are the key outputs. So that was number one. Then they, they did something, I think, even more interesting, which is they said, give me the formula that tells me when the yield is above 2% and this and that and that. And the chat GPT spat out a formula that was like perfect Excel logic. That was something that, you know, you or I could never figure out, right? You need like a super pro user of Excel to basically know how to do this stuff. So it spit it out and like, boom, it worked instantly. They copy and paste into the spreadsheet and this, you could basically like the spreadsheet was much more advanced now. So, what it got me thinking about is that we're going to have these little assistants everywhere. You combine that power with, say, speech to text, right? Because we could have just talked to it. it would, the speech to text would transcribe the instruction, spit it back out, and you're going to have these like little personal digital assistants in applications. I think you know it's pretty obvious to see how AI could replace call centers with you know having the frontline call center operator be instead of being a human it could be like an ai but this is actually even before that like you could actually i think in every single application that we use there's going to be an ai interface and like a it is probably going to be voice based where you can just say to it hey i'm trying to accomplish this like how do i do it can you just make it happen Totally. And it's going to be really powerful, actually. Now let's hear about Shamat Palihapitiya, the founder and CEO of Social Capital and an early senior executive at Facebook, is saying about creating a startup with AI. You can now actually get one or two really smart people like him to lead an effort where you would say, here's a couple hundred million dollars to compete with Stripe, but here are the boundary conditions. Number one is you can only hire five or ten engineers. And so what you would do is, is you would actually use tools like this to write the code for you. Hmm. And the ability to write code is going to be the first thing that totally. these guys, that these things do incredibly well with totally. absolute precision. You can already do unit testing incredibly well, but it's going to go from unit testing to basically end-to-end -end testing. And you'll be able to build a version of Stripe extremely quickly and in a very lean way. Finally, let's look at an example with Prompt UX and GitHub Copilot from Jason Calacanis, an angel investor at Uber and Robinhood, and also the host of the All In podcast. It was just a tweet. You described the design of an yeah, app. And here they cool. say an onboarding yeah. screen of a dog walking app. Incredible. And you type that in and it gives you a welcome screen. That's like a seven out of 10. Then it says, oh, a way for people to change their name, phone number, and password. You know, that classic screen on any app, I need to change my thing. Boom, it gives you that. Well, then at the same time that people are making text to UX, user interface, beautiful here, this stuff will get dumped into Figma. But then there's a GitHub Copilot, which if you haven't seen, we totally. all know it here. This is allowing you GitHub and GitHub Copilot. GitHub is bought by Microsoft, another one of Satya Nadella's incredible acquisitions. This guy's like the new Zuckerberg. I mean, what a what an incredible person to come after Bomber who's just so effective at what he's doing. 
as you're writing your code, it fills in your code. It knows what you're writing, just like in an email. And it's a smaller subset of information than email. Email, you could write anything. You could be you know, talking to a lover or a business person, whatever. Here, when you're doing programming, it's a much finer data set. These two things are going to come together where you're going to be able to build your MVP for your startup by typing in text and then publish it. You're not going to need a developer for your startup. That is transformative in the world. I created this list of skills that I think is going to be very helpful if you want to start a career as a prompt engineer. So the first one I have is strong writing and communication skills. Let's say prompt engineers are responsible for designing and writing prompt scripts. So strong writing and communication skills uh, will be essential. So I think that's pretty obvious, right? You need to be a good writer to write good prompts. Uh, but you can also find help anyways, and you can improve your writing, of course. The next one I have is attention to detail. So prompt engineers need to be meticulous and pay close attention in detail in order to create prompts that are clear and concise. So we have talked about this before, like a machine needs very clear instructions. Therefore, details can be or will be very important. So I think that is a valid point. Uh, I also took down some ability to work independently because I think mostly when you are designing prompts, you are working on your own. You could, of course, be working in a team, but I think you kind of need to be more remote maybe. You need to be able to work independently. But I think most people are adjusting to that now. And I talked about some technical skills, so like a basic understanding of natural language processing and how a large language model works. I think it's kind of important for a prompt engineer because you need to know the boundaries of a model, right? So you can't really ask it for, let's say, emotions. Write this script to make people cry. It's not going to work, right? So you need some kind of understanding of both the model and some natural language. Uh, and of course, creativity. Cre <laughs> Creativity. Creativity is very important, so prompt engineers need to be creative in order to design prompts that encourage the model to generate interesting and varied outputs. That is kind of what you, you if you just go write a 500 word article about something, that's not very creative. You kind of need to be creative, but you also can learn this by experimenting a lot, right? So I think that is a valid point. So I just put down some, how can you learn these skills? You can see here, experiment with models like ChatGPT and of course the new Bing. And when Bard comes out or other language models you can use too, GPT-3 and stuff. Uh, you can read books to expand your language skills. I think that's a very good point. And of course, study English language. And there's a lot of other things you can do. I also suggest if you want to do this, create a portfolio of these effective prompts you have created uh, that generates, say, good value or very good outputs that are very precise. So this can be used when applying for a job, right? That you can prove that you have done something that is very effective. So now let's take a look at some job listings I found on a prompt engineer where they are hiring this. So the first one we have is prompt engineer and librarian at Anthropic. So Anthropic is that new AI company that Google just invested 300 million, I think, in. So let's have a quick look here. So the salary is 61k to 77k i think that's pretty good i think this can increase of course over time so i said like like here they say given that the field of prompt engineering is arguably less than two years old this position is a bit hard to hire for if you have existing projects to demonstrate prompt engineering on large language models or image generation models we would love to see them so this is what i mentioned like in the portfolio so i think that could be very good uh, you can see a uh, representative project, discover, test and document best practices. Build up a library of high quality prompts or prompt chains to accomplish a variety of tasks with an easy guide to help users search and for the one that meets their needs. And of course, build a set of tutorials and interactive tools to teach them the art of prompt engineering. So here's something they think if this can be a good fit for you. So you have a creative hacker spirit and love solving puzzles. Excellent communicator and love technical teaching concepts and to create documentation. Have at least a high level familiarity with architecture and operations of large language model. Basic programming and QA skills. Small Python programs. Have an organizational mindset. Yeah, I think that's important. Uh, you make ambitious problems clear and identify core principles that translate across scenarios. Okay, so uh, have a passion for making PowerPoint technology safe. 
think creatively about the risk and benefits of new technologies. Yeah, this is kind of not so specific. So let's say what other things they have. Yeah, uh, there's just some benefits. Uh, I was thinking, no, that's pretty much it. So there are no like hard uh, requirements here. So there's not like you need a bachelor, you need an MBA. Uh, there's, there's nothing really a hard set um, requirement here. So that is very interesting. That means that if you start now, you build up a portfolio and yeah, you can show that you can do this. I think you have a good chat chance of uh, jobs uh, like this coming up in the future. And I expect the pay to kind of increase as this gets more in demand, right? So I also wanted to check out this one. This is our AI prompt engineer at the Boston's Children's Hospital. Uh, so this was a bit different. You can see the, the salary is a bit higher here, up to $92,000 a year. You can see the description is design and develop AI prompts using large language models, GPT-3, ChatGPT, and two and other solutions as they emerge for healthcare research, studies, and clinical practice. I think that's very interesting. So I think this could be like helping doctors, nurses, and write good prompts that can, can help them uh, do the paperwork. So it says like collaborate with researchers and clinic clinicians to understand their needs and design prompts that will effectively gather data, yeah? Implement some machine learning models to analyze data, that's a bit different son, if you have to do that because then you kind of need some other skills if you're gonna do some ml but you can learn that of course but we are looking for prompts now in this so you can hear here you see there is some other qualities so you need a bachelor degree in um, cs ai or related fields and you need some experience with the libraries you need some coding experience so here it's a bit different. Here they kind of set some higher requirements for this job. Yeah, that's interesting. But the first one we look at, there was no these kind of requirements, right? So that's very interesting. But I expect there's gonna be a lot of these showing up in 2023 that you can apply for if you are set on doing this. So yeah, we're gonna monitor this, so very interesting. So I just wanted to show you some of my uh, portfolio examples of prompts I have created for some clients. Let's just have a look at this one first. So this is, uh, I helped a client uh, create some basic movie script synopsis and summarizations. So these are not the most creative prompts, but they worked quite good. So this is just a simple, you are a script writer. Your task is to write conversational short synopsis from a given text. So write a short but detailed conversational synopsis from the following text. So here I just have my placeholder for my script and just feeding like the script in here, right? And write a short but detailed conversational synopsis from the text above. So here are some results. I ran this script from the Ex Machina movie. So here you can see X Machina follows the story of Caleb, a young programmer from Long Island. He wins a competition, so you can see Discord Nathan has built an AI Ava and Caleb is tasked to conducting a Turing test. So basically this is a synopsis of the whole X Machina script. So this was nothing from the movie, I just took the bare bones script with the lines and everything and summarized it into a synopsis of that movie. So we can also have a look at some another example here I did. So this is just a CV template example I did for someone. So you are a professional CV writer. Your task is to create general CV template with user inputs. Create a detailed CV template that includes the following parameters for name, personal information, education, experience, goals and ambitions. Three best personal characteristics. Create a detailed CV template for the info above. So let's copy that and run this over at uh, ChatGPT. Okay, so let's run that. And here you can see we have a CV that is pretty simple, like it's just your name, your personal information, LinkedIn profile address, degree, institution, graduation date, coursework, key responsibilities, yeah, job title, short-term goal, long-term goal, skills to develop, one, two, three characteristics, yeah. So a pretty basic CV template, but the prompt works and it gave me what I wanted. The client was happy and so was I. So hopefully this video gave you some inspiration. Maybe you want to start a career in prompt engineering or you just want to explore some more and start to learn. And maybe sometimes in the next few years become one. If you want to know more about this, sign up for my newsletter in the link below. You will get a free PDF of ChatGPT prompts I use all the time. 
And also you can check out my membership if you want to take a deep dive into generative AI. Also check out this video if you enjoyed this one. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.